Well, hi there. Welcome to Markets Tomorrow right here on ET Now in the Mumbai News Centre. And we're going to be really looking at the markets closing at, uh, you know, sub 7,500 after teasing that mark for the better part of trade. Uh, largely, sentiment has been a bit vulnerable and that's across the board. So the small cap and the mid cap indices also closed with ticks in the red. Uh, we talk about... Uh, what happened in the session today and what lies ahead going forward uh, given the outcome of the ECB meet. But let's uh, first uh, address uh, the key voices lined up on the show. Basant Maheshwari joins in with his perspective on trade. Manishi Ray Chaudhary uh, will talk about uh, the global cues and put that in perspective. Mary Joshi will also highlight his investment ideas. And Sachin, Sachit Anand Utekar uh, will talk about uh, the strategies uh, that you can benefit from in tomorrow's day of trade. Let's uh, first start off uh, with the top stories for the index. The Nifty, of course, closed below 7,500. The total open interest build-up at the 7,500 level was close to about 70 lakh shares, which essentially means that there's a lot of activity built up at, at that marker. And call writers continue to write uh, at the 7,500 to 7,700 uh, levels, which essentially defines the resistance zone for the market. So you'll have to wait and watch to see how much more upside is there for the market, given the lows it came off from uh, on budget day, which is a good six and a half, seven percent up move off uh, the recent lows for the index, uh, and remains to be seen whether it can actually go past this resistance range of between 7,500 and 7,700. Reliance Industries and Forces LNT ITC caused a 40 point drop on the Nifty, so index heavyweights are putting pressure today. The surge in HDFC, of course, supported the uh, Nifty's move. Uh, the advanced decline ratio was skewed in the favor of declines. PSU banks, energy stocks with some of the top uh, sectoral losers in trade. Pharma and metals ended with marginal gains, so there was not too much activity there. Uh, and of course, the mid-cap index also snapped its seven-day winning streak to close down about half a percent. We had the small cap index, which was vulnerable, and the India wicks, given that the market was falling, rose about two, two and a half percent uh, in the session. So that added to the intraday volatility we witnessed. Uh, the question that we are asking is, Will the ECB meet really lift market sentiment? Uh, uh, you know, whatever uh, comes out, what is uh, is that likely to help the markets recover? Because so far, an accommodative policy stance from any central bank has brought about a strong rebound in the markets from a short-term perspective. Sachit Anand, uh, come to you. Good evening. Uh, do you sense that the market could have more upside from here? Well, uh, good evening. Uh, so far, what we have seen is uh, post breaking uh, uh, from the 7250 band, uh, we have seen a good uh, amount of momentum uh, in Nifty. If you look at the overall sequence, uh, there has never been a close below its previous day close. So it is a very clear sign that the momentum is still there and uh, the same can be participated uh, even right now. So what we expect is uh, that this particular momentum uh, to continue, 7660, 7700 are the probable targets on a very short term basis and the stop loss can be placed at around 7400. Right, Mayuresh, what's your own sense? Uh, you know, how are you looking at the market trend from here on? Mayuresh, how are you looking at the markets trending from here on? Do you believe that there's more upside? Right, Sajid Anand, what's the call on the bank nifty then? Because, you know, the underlying tone of the market is really divine, defined by what the banks have been doing. Well, uh, banking, if we look at uh, the entire space, I think uh, even today uh, it, uh, it, it did outperform the nifty. And if you look at the overall structure, I think we are seeing a consolidation uh, for the last two days. So probably a trigger above 15,500 would again uh, 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 set in one more leg of momentum. So even right now, uh, banks are looking lucrative, especially the private sector names. We are still liking uh, Axis Bank, uh, we are liking the stock. Uh, even uh, ES Bank to that extent is doing well. So overall, uh, uh, the overall stance on Bank Nifty uh, remains positive. Okay. Mahesh, I was asking you about your expectation of the upside for the market from these levels. Mahesh, if you can hear me, I was asking you about uh, how are you looking at the upside of the market from here? Tanvi, there is some audio disturbance, so I mean, if you were asking me the question on the outlook for the markets, uh, 
My own take is uh, over the next few months, uh, we'll probably mirror what the global markets are doing at this point of time. And largely, I think on the domestic side, what happens with earnings as well as the CAPEX cycle is a known fact that it is going to take some while to revive. What happens with the RBI meet and the cut thereof is an important aspect to be looked for in the April policy meet. But the markets are just stating the fact that there will be a cut coming through 25 bips to say the least. So in my opinion, I think the markets would probably stay in a range. There might be another 100 points move on the Nifty. But clearly the markets will look forward to how the Q4 earnings will start coming out in the first half of uh, April, that is in the next few days. And that is what the markets will take you from. Mm. Uh, you know, individually, uh, really it was about uh, names such as Euro Motor Corp, uh, you know, on the index. Uh, there was activity in some of uh, the metal names. Hindalco performed in the session. And some of the consumer-oriented names like Asian Paints also did well. Mahesh, uh, do you believe that the tilt of the market is moving towards the consumer sector or the consumption-oriented themes? So clearly, I think consumer is something that we're probably liking at this point of time. And uh, within the consumer basket itself, our own take is whether it's white goods or whether it's the two-wheeler companies. These companies are expected to do well from an earnings perspective over the next four to six quarters. Having said that, what numbers came out specifically from the two-wheeler side, that is showing an encouraging trend. And if this trend continues with good monsoons coming through, companies like Hero Motor Corp, TBS Motors, in our opinion, benefit because a large portion of the revenues come through from the rural market. And if input costs staying benign, our own take is that the earnings outlook for these companies increases multifold. Similarly, from the consumer discretionary space, whether that is the pure FMCG play or something to do with white goods, our own take is if one really remains selective and if one really assumes that the monsoons are about normal for this fiscal year, a lot more will happen in terms of discretionary spending coming through specifically from the rural side. And a lot of these uh, names were having a rural presence with distribution network well entrenched into the semi-urban and rural areas are going to benefit multifold. So our own take is that stocks like Dower, which are attractively valued at this point of time, stocks like Britannia, stocks like Symphony, Blue Star, are expected to do well over the next uh, year, year and a half. Okay. Uh, let's go across to Darshan as he look at, looks at the internal data and highlights uh, how 7500 is turning out to be a tricky zone for the market. Darshan. See, the week-long rally on the Nifty has been snapped. Uh, 7500 continues to be the big uh, resistance that the market is facing on the Nifty. Again, today we opened above it and then, you know, there was a selling pressure that came in uh, and we ended uh, much lower than the 7500 mark. So, so the bears are taking all efforts to actually go ahead and defend the 7500 mark. Now, what we're seeing is that the open interest at the 7500 call is the highest. It's close to 67 lakh shares and call writers were extremely aggressive in trade today from 7500 right up to levels of 7800 is where call writers were writing the positions indicating that you know they don't anticipate the market to move up higher put writers minuscule amount of writing coming in at levels of 7400 so 7500 continues to be defended by the bears currently and today it was the heavyweights that actually saw a lot of selling so counters like you know infosys reliance itc lnt they caused the weakness in fact uh, these four counters caused a 40 point drop in the nifty and and the top two reliance and Infosys were responsible for a 30-point cut in the Nifty. What actually helped the Nifty today in trade was the late surge that happened in HDFC. Because HDFC surged more than 2%, it has a good weight on the index, and that actually caused a move of almost 10 points on the Nifty. So yes, uh, if you're looking at the option data and what is happening as far as selling in heavyweights is concerned, it seems that uh, there is a lot of resistance that is coming in for the Nifty at the 7500 level currently. Thanks, Darshan, for that uh... Sachitanand, how are you looking at the charts of Asian Paints as well as Hero Motor Corp? Well, uh, if you look at the overall structure of Hero Motor Corp, uh, we have seen that since August, uh, another trend uh, has been very uh, almost sideways, and uh, the recent contraction uh, is something that is. Uh, taking a rise and if you look at the overall setup then it looks like a triangular pattern and uh, the breakout has already happened. So what we expect is uh, the stock to scale higher towards the level of 33.20 or so. This is the pattern target that we are talking about and the same can be still participated uh, with a stop loss at 26. At Asian Paints, uh, it's a very similar contraction uh, that we are seeing uh, 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 which is very much similar to 
hero motor cop uh, but the contraction is uh, uh, on the daily scale and we are seeing a similar setup uh, getting unfolded here so probably this is a very good uh, scenario wherein uh, longs can be initiated keep a stop loss of 870 expect a breakout above 910 and we could see a good sharp momentum coming in the stock okay fair enough uh Poonam now joins in uh, to put things in perspective in the oil and gas space uh, as there was a policy boost that came into the sector with the government approving the MMDR amendment as also the hydrocarbon exploration policy. Poonam, tell all. Uh, well, that we in fact a uh, very positive development coming in, especially on the Mines and uh, Minerals Development and Regulation Act, wherein they have permitted uh, transferring captive mining rights directly to the new owners uh, without any auctions. And do know that this will definitely make the mineral assets more liquid. It would definitely help financing, transferring, securitization, as well as monetization of assets, uh, pretty much simpler and easier. Two key deals were, which were, one was of course the uh, Ultratech uh, deal worth. 5,400 crore Ultratech JP cement deal as well as the another deal of uh, Billa Corp. That did not go through because the act had to be amended and both Billa Corporation as well as Ultratech would be the key beneficiaries. The second bit is in terms of oil ministry wherein they have cleared uh, premium pricing for new gas from uh, deep waters as also they have allowed uh, more freedom in terms of pricing uh, for difficult fields and ONGC and RIL are the two stocks uh, to benefit the most out of this. Thanks for that, uh, Poonam. Uh, let's take a short break, uh, but as we do so, here are Basant Maheshwari talk about his investment ideas and his investment outlook. Earning-based recovery would happen now. I think the sentiment-based thrashing has happened. So stocks which will report earnings, good earnings, they will go up. And there you have to just clean up your portfolio because everything is fallen and it's a perfect time to switch to the faster bus, as we might call. But if you've already made your money in life and you say, I want protection, then you'd buy gold and buy do bank FDs. But if you want to become rich, this seems to be the only mechanism for you where you can convert a few lakhs into a few crores. Of course, there's a time that has to be spent doing that, but I think that's the way we have to focus on it. The premise of investing remains the same. High, gro high growth HFCs, obviously that's one of them. Second is the mid-cap pharma space, obviously uh, that's we've discussed that. And the third is the IoT and the digital transformation space, which I've been looking at for the last three, four months. Welcome back. You're still watching uh, Markets Tomorrow right here on ED Now. Mayuresh, uh, come to you on, uh, you know, what's happening uh, with uh, the banking space right now. It's a, it's a one day up, one day down kind of a trade. How are you positioning yourself? Are you really looking at every dip as to accumulate in especially the large cap private banks? No, largely, Tanvir, I think that is the space that uh, we, we are more comfortable with at this point of time. Yes, the asset quality concerns will play a lot on uh, banks lending to the corporates and a lot of these corporate lended balance sheets will still remain under stress for the better part of uh, Q4. Now what really happens after that if credit growth doesn't pick up or there is still some end user um, uh, requirement in terms of working capital constraints, that will still play taunt on balance sheets. But again, I think larger private sector banks is something that we are very, very comfortable with. We still believe uh, that the credit cycle should pick up meaningfully over the next two to three, uh, two to three quarters. And if that happens, I think the earnings recovery will be very, very beautiful in FI17. Having said that, probably, I think the larger private sector banks, to the tune of Axis Bank, ICICI Bank, Yes Bank, a clutch of this is something that we're probably preferring at this point of time. Mm. Satyad Anand, uh, you're looking at uh, Infosys down 3%. Uh, is the trend line on IT weak? No, I wouldn't uh, uh, conclude that uh, if you look at the overall uh, performance of the stock, I think uh, the stock is still uh, beautifully placed within the band of 1190 on the higher side and 1120 on the lower side. So probably uh, this is not a trend change or kind of a thing. Uh, we are, what we are expecting is uh, some more consolidation here and then probably uh, we may see uh, the leadership again uh, coming back in IT. Okay, there was a big move in Venki's India in the session today. Have you taken a look at the charts there, Sachitanand? Uh, you're looking at a 17% move at closer to 320. 
Yes, uh, if you look at the uh, current momentum, yes, uh, it looks very strong. Uh, this is the uh, this is the first time wherein the stock has closed uh, uh, on a very strong note above its 200-day moving average. But uh, something uh, which is missing is the kind of volume activity what, what we have seen for the last couple of days. And I would uh, rather refrain from uh, creating any long positions right now. Probably a, a couple of days more and if we see a strong momentum like this uh, continuing in the stock, then we can uh, consider the stock. But overall, I think uh, uh, it, it is best to avoid a stock like this at this point of time. Mm. How are you positioning yourself on PSU banks, Mayuresh, uh, in this fall? No, again, largely, I think, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, a lot of the asset quality woes might continue for a lot of PSU banks. Uh, and though a few of the banks reported better asset quality numbers, the entire theme for PSU banks uh, would be on two count. A, how the asset quality pans out, which is still expected to be very, very weak in Q4, with the cleansing up of balance sheets still taking place with the RBI directive in perspective. And secondly, what happens with capital adequacy? Now, the finance minister has promised 25,000 odd crores. In, in this fiscal year, what probably happens in what tranches it comes through and how it shores up the capital adequacy reserves for a lot of these banks is an important aspect to be looked for. Importantly, I think the macro perspective still remains a little bit bleak when it comes to credit growth, when it comes to credit costs will still remain elevated in the system. And that probably will take a toll on a lot of these PSU banks. Valuation is extremely compelling at this point of time. The only bank that we'll probably prefer uh, from a long-term perspective would be State Bank of India, where our belief is that uh, all four parameters are probably working in favor of the bank. Yes, I think asset quality pressures are there, but they should get ironed out over the next few quarters. Capital advocacy remains extremely strong. The CASA ratio remains extremely strong, and the valuations remain extremely compelling at this point of time. Would trade be off uh, the engineering names right now after yesterday's uh, move in Crompton Greaves? Do you think there's light at the end of the tunnel there, Mayuresh? No, clearly, I think uh, with the deal coming through, A, I think the debt is going to come down drastically. In fact, it's going to be a debt-free company by F517. Both the businesses, whether they were the T&D business or the systems business, were incurring losses for Crompton Greaves. So clearly, I think the pain specifically from this part of the business which was getting factored in why the stock had got beaten down is largely getting priced in now. Secondly, probably you're talking about the other businesses doing well. And again, I think in the coming week, you're probably going to see the corporate action take place where the consumer durable business is going to get demerged. So I think that is going to be a huge positive for the stock going forward. And yes, I think the sale that has happened and at what valuations it happened is a definite positive for Crompton Greaves. So yes, I think investors holding on to the stock should continue holding on to Crompton Greaves. And those are some interesting charts. So yes, year to date, the stock has lost uh, you know, close to about 15% uh, plus. I, I missed that figure there, almost 20%, uh, sorry, uh, from a year to date perspective. But And that brat, big crack came in uh, uh, around about uh, early Feb. But look at the way the stock has come back in the last one month in lieu of all these fundamental announcements. If you are looking at debt coming off uh, uh, and reducing on the balance sheet and uh, the company improving its execution abilities at a time when the cycle could reverse, then that would be an interesting point uh, to look at the overall ratios uh, and the return on equity, return on investment coming in from Crompton Greaves and take a fresh call on the stock. Technically, this 17% move at 150, Sachitanan, do you see more upside here? Well, as you pointed out, uh, for the kind of drop that we saw around 160, 170, you know, uh, during this particular fall, uh, that gap is still open, and uh, there's a bright chance that uh, the stock may retest or revisit this particular gap. So probably uh, one should not create a fresh trade, but yes, uh, or trailing stops can be initiated here below yesterday's low. 137 should be the uh, stop loss for the trade, uh, with an expectation of a uh, of a move towards this particular gap around 160. Let's get an idea for tomorrow then. Uh, and Mayuresh, your top three uh, recommendations at this point? So clearly, I think with the government focus uh, uh, happening on roads, highways, infrastructure, cement is a theme that we'll still continue to like and prefer uh, for the better part of FI16. 
yes i think the expectations are laid out in terms of how the volume growth will happen how volume recovery will take place but over the next couple of quarters our own take is that uh, volume recovery should be quite substantial that should realize in realizations remaining very very stable and with the benign input cost whether that be pet co consumption or the freight charges coming off i think the power and fuel expenses as a percentage of the overall cost should also see a declining trend so clearly i think uh, uh, companies like ultratech cement companies like orient cement uh, with that new capacity which has come up in gulbarga i think these companies should do exceedingly well within the pharma space supplies a stock that i'm continuing to prefer yes i think the stock has been under pressure when it comes to margins but there is a strong nda pipeline 147 odd drugs 79 approved so far you're looking at a 3 billion dollar opportunity in terms of the inhaler market the domestic market has held up pretty well and with new products expected on the respiratory uh, system i think these uh, products will do exceptionally well on the domestic business uh, for sipla again large cap it and the kind of uh, fall that we probably witnessed in infosys our own take is that tolerant revenue growth in terms of uh, rupee revenue should be in excess of 30 north percent company setting in excess of 5 billion dollars in terms of cash the company expects the order book to increase from the 3 billion dollars that it is currently sitting on utilization expected to, uh, to increase by 300 odd bips the kind of client mining that this company is doing is going to augur well when it comes to addition of new clients going forward and again the management largely expects the bid to stay between 25 26 odd percent valuations again i think around 17 and a half times quite attractively placed from a couple of years time horizon okay mahesh uh, you know those are your top investment bets uh, sajitanand come to you what is it that you would recommend for trade tomorrow will we continue with our uh, positive bias on the banking space and uh, if you look at the overall consolidation we expect banking to outperform from here on uh, taking that into consideration axis bank is uh, still on our buying list we we like the stock we expect uh, a positional move right up to 465 uh, which can be participated with a stop loss at 400 Uh, we also like Hero Motor Corp. We've already discussed uh, this particular stock. We expect the stock to scale higher towards the level of 3320, and uh, it can be initiated with a stop loss at 2640. We have a sell idea on Arcom. Uh, if you look at the overall structure, the stock has been uh, uh, trending down, and the recent uh, swing that we saw uh, uh, is again uh, indicating that there is. Uh, a uh, loss of momentum and we expect uh, the trend to continue so a sell can sell call can be initiated here keeping a stop loss at 5650 and we expect the stock to revisit its a uh, 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 lows at around 48 all right jamin thanks very much for taking the time to speak with us uh, and share with us your investment ideas your approach towards the market at this point uh, we leave our viewers with another important voice uh, from overseas manishi ray choudhury uh, MBN Asia Pacific equity strategist at BNP Paribas expects the central bank dovishness and commodity recovery uh, to continue for some time. Here am I. We catch you with the market as always tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You know, in terms of valuations, if one looks at Asia as a whole or emerging markets, then the discount between developed markets and emerging markets has widened massively. But at least in the near term, I would think that this recovery in emerging market liquidity would possibly continue. unless we are sort of spiked by an unexpected decision by some of the central banks particularly the fed we would rather focus on the private sector banks not the ones which are uh, you know kind of catering to corporate loans but the ones which are more focused on retail loans i would also focus on select consumer discretionaries possibly more so the two wheelers at this point of time Um and finally some of the select industrials particularly those which are not leveraged select oil refiners and uh, you know some of the building material companies as i highlighted particularly those which are generating significantly higher return on capital compared to the cost of capital so those are really the stock selection